Howdy folks, Gene Gordoner here from Kilimanjaro Rifles in Kalispell, Montana. But we're not in Montana today, we're in the great southwest, but a whole lot south and a whole bunch west. I'm further west than I've ever been in my whole life. Today we're sitting on a mountaintop on the South Island of New Zealand, and we've come here for a great adventure. And uh, the purpose is we're going to hunt a free-range wild red stag out here in the mountains. And you know at Kilimanjaro Rifles, I can build you any kind of rifle you'd like. We build a lot of custom bolt-action guns, any action you'd like, any caliber you want, any stock shape you want. Totally custom, no holds barred. I'll build you anything in the world. But today we're going to hunt with something different. What I've got here is one of our Kilimanjaro historical rifles. This rifle is a copy of a rifle. It's actually brand new. It might look 200 years old, but I only built this about three years ago. It's a 10-bore Jaeger rifle, which just means German hunting rifle, 79 caliber, and it's a flintlock. And the range is uh, sort, of, sort of limited with this type of a rifle. I've got two sight settings. I can flip it down. I got 75 yards, and I've got 125 yards. So you can see we're going to have to get fairly close to this free-range red stag to do the job. And we brought along Mark Hamilton from Mountain Edge Video Productions to film this hunt for us. And I'm going to be hunting with Gus Bissett from New, New Zealand Trophy Hunting. And Gus is the one that came up with this great idea. I'll introduce Gus and let him tell you about his hey, business Gus. a little bit. How are you going, Gene? Great. It's great to have you with us here. Thanks. Our company, New Zealand Trophy Hunting, has been operating for around 30 years, offering hunts all over the South Pacific for big game animals and game birds. But on this particular adventure, we've got Gene out from Kilimanjaro Rifles to take on the ultimate challenge. We're going to be hunting for a true free range red stag up here in the mountains in the northern end of the South Island. And he's going to be going to try and take this animal with his 10 bore flintlock. As far as we're aware, no one's ever tried this before on free range animals of this size. So with a little luck, and uh, I'll do my best on the guiding, and I'm sure Gene will do the best with his shooting, hopefully we can take out a good one. So what do you think, Gene? Should we go and have a look? I reckon we ought to. Right, oh, let's, let's do, do it. it. Guess. Well, <laughs> what a morning. We saw this stag up here and decided to try to stalk and uh, got Mark into position, then we took off. We came up across this hillside. He was hidden in a thicket there pretty well and seemed like he was gonna stay put. Something seemed to have his attention. So we tried to put the sneak on him, but uh, we got within 20 yards of where he was hiding, but didn't realize that, I guess, but he sneaked out the top and uh, he got over the hill. But uh, Gus, what did you think of him? He was, he was a nice stag, but... Uh, he sure had not, me excited. <laughs> yeah, no, he's a nice stag, but we just wasn't quite what we're looking for. So. That was pretty cool. It was great to see him. Boy, he was tucked away in that thicket. I think he thought he was hidden from the world in there. And he let us get pretty close, but, you know, they don't, they don't get big by being stupid. And he decided he better leave, I guess. That was pretty cool. Yeah. It's been so a great morning already. It has. So That's we'll, pretty uh, cool. We'll keep going and see if we can find something bigger. All right, great. Good deal. Let's go do it.
134. Just wait till he stops. Oh, the money shot. <laughs> I feel bad for him. <laughs> <laughs> nice shot, Gene. Awesome. And he looked like he had pretty nice horns, too. Gus is doing the hard work. He's going up the hill to get him. All right. First New Zealand trophy. Feral goat running across the hill. And it was about 134 yards and uh, 10 boar right in the back of the head going up the hill. A done deal. Smugged him. Now we're on to bigger and better things. <laughs> In order to reload quickly, I didn't bring a shooting pouch per se. Normally I'd have a bag and a horn, but you know, when you're hunting in the mountains, you don't want a lot of stuff to get caught in the brush or clank around and make noise. So I've just got a small strap around my neck. I've got a second powder charge in here if I need one. I've got a patch of round ball sitting right there in the bottom of it. I can uncork the top, pour the powder charge in, drive the ball in with the short starter. Here's the short starter right here. Let me get my tools up here. Short starter's right here. I just pull it out, ram it in, and let it set till I'm done. Then I can pull it back up here so these things don't clank around together. I've got a vent pick sitting right here if I need to clean the touch hole. Keep it kind of handy. And then I've got my priming charge right here. I can pull this out, prime the pan, and be ready to shoot. So it only takes, I would say, less than half a minute to recharge and be ready to shoot again. And then after that, I'd want to clean the gun again, reload for the next trip through the mountains here so when we find something else to shoot at, that we can depend on the rifle to go off every time. Now I've got a small pouch on my side, and in here, I've got more round balls. I've got five charges in the pouch. I've got five pre-measured powder charges ready to go. Pop the cork, throw it in, and I've got patched round balls, or patched lubed patches, I'm sorry. I got lubed patches in the tin, Got a round ball and a powder charge. So I've got five more shots in the pouch when I need it. And I've got, uh, like I said, the tool in here also to do maintenance on the rifle if I need to. So you need to go through a few extra things to make sure that a flintlock will work. But if you take your time and do these things, you can be pretty assured that when you need your rifle, it'll work and you'll be able to take the shot. And hopefully we'll be able to take the shot of a lifetime and get a great stag soon. Hear the stag roaring over here, over on this face. It's about 1,500 yards away, but um, we're just trying to roar them out. So I've got my got my roaring horn here just to amplify the sound a bit, and he just replied back to us. So we're just trying to get a glimpse of him and see um, see if he's worth uh, worth pursuing. An odd, he's got 14 points, but he's got he's an odd shape. He's got big brow tines, he's missing his bay tines on both sides. Mm -hmm. He's got a kicker out the side, a forked kicker out, at one side, mm -hmm. and then on the top, on one side, he's got four, and on the other side, he's really weak and he's only got three short tines. Mm -hmm. So he's kind of like a freak, yeah. yeah so, but hey, he's the biggest one we've seen, it's pretty cool. Yeah, probably scores about 260. Yeah. 265 somewhere around there, maybe maybe max of 270. Yeah. But yeah. Just bare minimum We had a great morning. We're gonna have a little lunch, a little snooze, and get fired up to do it again. We'll go out this evening, and uh, we saw an area where there sounded to be three or four stags roaring. So we're gonna go check them out this evening and see what we can find out there. It should be a lot of fun.
stags wrong on each other, just over here. Um, 12 pointer right over on the far side. And then there's one in under the hill that we can't see. So we're gonna, gonna go and have a look and see what's happening there. And um, hopefully it's a good one. Good. This is uh, just after first light on our second day out, and last night we located a huge, magnificent stag. We were uh, in a drainage that we saw five for sure that were roaring, and there were two or three more that we couldn't see. But we're right now at the bottom of that drainage. And Gus has climbed a small ridge here just to try to locate where they may have gone last night and where they're feeding this morning. He's got a game plan, but we got to find where they are before we can figure out how to attack. We found him. He's up there, pretty much the same place he was last night. Back this way a little bit. Problem is the hinds everywhere, females everywhere, so we're going to have to sneak. And I spooked two just up here, just above the track, and the hind was barking at me. Making a bit, they make a big noise, like, ooh, ooh, like that. And I thought, oh no. But he's far enough up the gully um, that they're not going to hear that. So we've got to do about a, probably a thousand yard stalk um, to get within range. So he's hoping. Anyway, we better get moving because the wind's probably going to start shifting and coming up the gully oh, soon. Great. So Good deal. let's go and get it. We're off.
If he's in this category, we can come around. He's got nine on one side. Oh, <laughs> shit. Yeah! <laughs> oh, the money shot. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Woo! 120 yards. Drilled his ass. Boy. Oh, man. This is what we are talking about. Oh, man. This is big free range stuff here. Look at that. Woohoo! The Lord is a good guy. <laughs> Look at the state of that big boy. Oh, now that's a free range red stag. Wow. Hey? That's pretty cool. What a stonker. Man. That is a beast. Oh. But you don't get them any better than that. <laughs> you don't. Oh, thank you again, Gus. This is the beast that we were after, and uh, we've come halfway across the world to do this, and I'm pretty excited. This has been the greatest hunt of my life. Thank you, partner. No worries, Jim. <laughs> It was a good deal. It's our pleasure. Good deal all along. Great hunt. Thanks a bunch. Great ending. Well, folks, we've come to the end of our grand, glorious adventure in the mountains of New Zealand. And we have traveled as if on hind's feet in high places. We started this hunt with some pretty lofty goals. We wanted to try to take the largest, wild, free-ranging red stag that we could find with a flintlock rifle. And I believe we may have succeeded. We. Uh, Looked over about 15 or 16 stags. We actually found this big fella one evening just at dusk, about a mile and a half away. And I was, uh, I was worried that in the morning I might have to fight Gus for the flintlock. He was so excited. And in the morning we did find him. We stalked him for quite a while. The first time we found him was at 223 yards, too far to shoot. The next time we found him it was 109 yards, but all we could see was his face and an antler. No shot. The next time we came upon him was 75 yards in his bed, but before I could squeeze the shot, he was over the saddle and down the ridge and gone. But Gus always seemed to know exactly what to do to stay on the track, and we dogged him further up the mountain. The next time we found him, with his hinds at 120 yards broadside, I was able to make the shot, and here he stands. I hate to make any premature assumptions, but it's possible that he may be pushing quite up into the top of the record book for a muzzleloader red stag. We'll know when it's all officially measured. But I have to attribute the success of this hunt to Gus's extensive knowledge of the animals we hunted and the country we hunted in. Gus always seemed to know exactly where we might find big stags and, and where they would be in the morning, where they would travel to. And uh, I don't believe this hunt would have been possible without Gus's expert assistance in this. And we've had a great time and this is probably the finest hunt I've ever had in my life. I'm not sure if I could ever surpass it. And we were just thrilled to death to be able to do this with one of Kilimanjaro's historical rifles, the 10 bore Jaeger rifle. Fare thee well for now, friends. Till next time. Well, the cattle growl and the coyotes howl out on the great divide. I never done no wrong, just a singing a song as down the trail I ride. The rattlesnakes rattle at the prairie dogs, you can hear their mournful tunes. When it's roundup time, way out west, the cactus is in balloon. The oodly load lady, oodly load tea. We don't have cold weather, it never snows or rains. 
This is where the sun shines best, out on the western plains. Some of the boys have gone away, but they will be back soon. It's a roundup time, but way out west, the cactus is in bloom. Yodely lo lady, yodely lo Yeah, the daylight comes and the cow hands yell, they call out every hand. Throw my saddle on the old cow horse, drink my coffee from the can. Sun goes down on the cattle trail, and I'm a gazing at the moon. And it's a roundup time, way out west, and the cactus is in bloom. The yodely little lady, yodely little tea. It's a roundup time, way out west, and the cactus is in bloom. The yodely little lady, yodely little 